Hey everybody, hey Cardware here, and in this video we are going to go over installing the latest version of Proxmox VE, which is 9.0, that was released on August 5th. So I highly recommend if you're going to be using Proxmox, make sure you're using the latest version. Uh, we're going to skip through a few of these steps, and there'll be potentially more videos or guides if it seems like it's necessary, but what we're going to do is basically kind of skip past the uh, installation media and we're just going to start from booting from that media but there are some hardware requirements these are like minimum so i would recommend much more than two gigabytes i'd say more like eight gigabytes especially if you're going to be running lots of vms and containers you're going to want like 16 32 i'm running 64 gigabytes of memory on mine storage 32 gigabytes but that again that's the bare minimum if you're doing something more like zfs then keep in mind your ram requirements are going to be a little bit higher uh, I'd say, you know, you'd want at least 256 gigabytes for your storage network. You definitely need a network. Uh, one gigabit per second is fine. And then USB drive, this is just for the installation media. You're going to want at least two gigabytes. I'd highly recommend just a little bit more to give you a little bit of room for the installation media. And you do need to have virtualization turned on. That's typically a BIOS option. So if you run into issues that may be the case as far as getting uh, proxmox you just can go to the downloads page which i've linked here and install the latest version and then verify it if you want with the checksum the download's really slow so if you have torrent available uh, that's much faster creating the installation media is pretty straightforward i think by now there's tons of resources on how to do it i actually use ventoy which is like a way to store you'll see it when we get into the installation but uh, I store like all of my images on there and it's kind of nice you just copy and paste them onto the drive you don't have to like do any special writing to the drive it just works flawlessly highly recommend it there I do have a video on that uh, which I will link actually in this guide as well and this guide is going to be linked in the description of the video and then on, Li on Linux, it's much easier. You can just you know copy it over. But again, I, I highly recommend Ventoy for uh, your installation media. And then we're going to just go to the booting from the installation media. So of course, you'll just stick the USB drive into your computer and then boot it up. And then typically, uh, you can either boot directly to the boot menu, which is sometimes F12, sometimes F11, or you can go into your BIOS. And a lot of times, you can select the boot device from there or change the defaults to make sure you're uh, booting from the correct device uh, but once you are to the point where you're booting from that usb drive i'm actually going to move over to uh, proxmox because what i'm going to do is basically go through the installation of proxmox in proxmox as a vm so we're just going to start this and get it booted up and actually uh, i need to do what I just talked about. So if we go into hardware, what I'm going to do is add a USB device and it's going to be the USB device that I want to boot from with Ventoy on it. I'll click add, then in options. And typically you would do this like in your BIOS, but since I'm in Proxmox, uh, we can change the boot order, enable USB, and then make that the first device that it boots from. And then I do need to restart this. So I'm just going to actually do stop for the changes to take place. And then we'll just go back into the console and we'll start it again. So just gotta make sure that boot device is working. And here we go. So this is Ventoy and I have a bunch of different uh, ISOs on here, but we're gonna do Proxmox VE9. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter on that, just normal boot. And this will bring you into the installer and we're just gonna do the graphical installer This will probably just look like regular text loading for you. Yeah, like very similar to this as we load the installer and get moving here to the next step. And all this is covered in the guide here. So I'm not really gonna go into the guide, but every single screenshot and everything is in the guide here. So the hardest part is gonna be the networking configuration, but let's just jump into the actual installation here. We'll just click agree for the EULA and then you're gonna select your target hard disk. You should typically see your installation media and then whatever drives you have in here, just select the appropriate drive. It is going to delete anything on there, so just make sure you're selecting the correct one. 
And then there are options here. I recommend for most people ext4. Uh, chances are, if you want any of these other options, you're going to know what to select, uh, or there's like going to be another guide you can follow to, to do that. So we're just going to go with the default options here, ext4. We'll click Next. Select your time zone and your keyboard layout and your country. Then click Next. Set your password. And put in an email. Uh, you typically want to put in a real email, you will get uh, alerts. So we'll do next. And then, so this is typically the hardest part. So if you have multiple networking devices, you may see multiple in this drop down here for management interface. Uh, but most likely it's going to select the default one that works. It's like set up and you'll see a little green dot there. That's typically means it's going to be working. Uh, but if you have like dual uh, network interface cards, you can uh, choose which one you want. And then for host name, I usually just do like pve1.internal. So dot internal is what uh, is typically recommended for like internal services. And then the IP address, this is going to be a static IP address that you're going to need to reserve, or it's, you know, it's a good idea to reserve that in your router. So if you go to, um, there's usually like static IP section or something where you can uh, reserve that IP and you would put in that same IP address here. And then for gateway, you're gonna use the gateway for your router. And then my router is also gonna be my uh, DNS server. So we'll go ahead and click next. And then we're gonna just do automatically reboot after successful installation. These are all my um, settings here. We'll just do install. And this takes a couple minutes. I'm just running like a VM with very limited resources, so there's not a whole, uh, this might take a minute here, but we'll see how long it takes to finish up. Okay, that took probably about a minute, uh, two minutes, so it will automatically reboot. I don't have to click reboot. And one thing I am going to have to do, uh, because it is going to reboot, is it's going to try and go to Ventoy again because I have that set as the primary device here. So I'm going to right click and just stop this. And then I'll go into hardware and I'm actually just going to remove that device because I don't need it anymore. And we'll go back to the console and we'll click start. So just make sure you remove your USB device. That way it will boot from the hard drive and you're going to see this boot menu here. Just click enter or it'll automatically proceed after a couple seconds. Okay, perfect. So I'm running Proxmox inside Proxmox, but at this point, you no longer need to do anything on the actual host PC. You can take this URL uh, up here, this IP address plus the port 8006, and I think that's 158. And you can actually just put that in your browser 192.168.10.158.8006. And you're going to get this, you know, potential security risk. That's just because we're not, uh, we don't have a certificate. So we'll do advanced and then accept and continue. You'll put in your password here and root will be your username. You can save username if you want and then just click log in. Now you will get a subscription notice. So there'll be uh, the next video that you should check out is the post install guide. It'll show you how to get rid of the subscription nags to make sure everything's updated um, and it uh, makes sure the correct repositories are enabled or disabled. So we'll just click OK here. But at this point, if we're looking at the guide, we're all the way down here for the post installation uh, essential task. So you're going to want to run this post install script and then check out like the getting started with Proxmox uh, guides, which they may not be totally done at the point of this being posted, but they are getting worked on. I have uh, a bunch of guides we're working on. So definitely check those out and uh, hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.